Hello everyone, this is Wilma Tacos and welcome to another Stories from Sector 8 video, the not weekly, semi-weekly, whenever I want to podcast about Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigmar if you prefer. Um, today's video and probably the videos for uh, a good deal of time afterwards are going to be centered around something different and uh, they're going to be named appropriately. Um, as you can probably see in the title, I've probably come up with with a snazzy name for them. I have one in mind, but I I will look into it and see if it's been used for too many other things. And if not, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal it from my own. So, um, the story I have to tell today, and the story that's gonna be the, kind of the the head story from here on out for for, for a bit. Um, I am now involved in a Warhammer 40k campaign. It is a currently a six-man campaign. Um, if we get more players, it'll jump up only in twos, so we go from eight. But odds are good that we will not get any players, so it'll just be the six of us. Um, I currently wish to drop out of the campaign, so I don't know how many we, how many more of these videos I will do. And if I'm able to drop out, it will go back down to the normal stories from Sector 8 videos. Um, but for as long as I, I stay in the campaign, I will be doing these campaign videos. I want to drop out because it's the campaign itself is not very fun. Um, anyways. Um, I, I considered for a while how I was going to do these campaign videos, and I decided that I would try to tell the overall progress of the campaign in addition to my to my individual games. Um, up to now, two games have been played in the campaign. Uh, there's going to be it's going to be sets of three, one on one, one on one, one on one. That that covers all six of us. Um, so two out of the three have been played so far. The first one was between two other players, one on my team, one on their team, of course. Um, I was not there. I did not see the game, so I can't really comment on it. But I I was told that the person who was on my side um, got tabled, and I'll, I'll try not to use names, but it, I may I may let one slip. Um, um, the the person who was on my team, well, call call them by their factions. There was a Blood Angel player on my team, and the opponent was playing Chaos, mostly Chaos Space Marines. There's probably some demons mixed in because there's demons in the Codex, so I just call it Chaos. But he was playing Chaos, and uh, my guy, my my team member was playing Blood Angels, and apparently he got tabled. My guy, so um, they won. Uh, a victory in these game time in this particular mission setup is. Three points so they got three points the way it works is the campaign is set up into five to pl uh, five battle zones you play a number of games in each battle zone and at the very end whoever has accumulated the most points wins um, each battle zone is different the current battle zone we're playing in is kind of like a, a smoky cloudy desert kind of thing so like uh, night fighting is always in effect because it's just hard to see um, so l there's little things like that that affect the individual war zones. Um, uh, players on my team are the Blood Angels player, the Tyranid player, and me as um, me as Necrons. Uh, the opponent is Chaos, Harlequins, and Imperial Guard. So the first game. Um, my team, my team member got tabled, and it was a victory for them. Um, in addition to to each of the five battle zones, each of the five each player has five heroes. You can't have unique named heroes in in, the, in any of these campaign games because it's it's said that like all these all these named characters have their own lore and fluff. They're off doing other things, so they can't be involved in this. But we basically had to create our own five heroes give them names and um, they got some special abilities um, there there is there's technically there's seven of us there's six players and there's one person who's running the whole thing so there's there's a judge and that kind of thing so all that's being monitored no heroes died um, yet so there's no extra points there or anything like that so that that's basically just kind of the groundwork for the campaign um, as for my game it was me as Necrons versus the Harlequin player and uh, I know I know I just fought the Harlequin player last week but I, I played against him again today for the campaign because that's what, who I was set up to fight against and um I, I'm, I'm very unhappy with how the game went not not because I, I lost I got my art my behind kicked or anything but uh, I, I'm unhappy with how it ended. 
Uh, the game was 1250 points. The mission type was predetermined as Crusade, so we were playing Crusade, and I only I rolled a one for the objectives, which means there was only three objectives because it's D3 plus two. So there was three objectives. Two of them were in his deployment zone. One of them was in mine because we rolled off to see who got to place the first one. It was him, so he got to place two. I got to place one. Obviously, you favor your own deployment zones. So there were two in his, one in mine. Um, it was Crusade. Uh, just standard, standard deployment zones. I uh, it was 1250 points. I brought Necrons. He brought Harlequins. He brought um, his army again, like like it was last week. It's just a series of formations. He he didn't have any detachments. And he had no force organization. He didn't have any any troop choices on the table or warlords on the table or heroes, HQs on the table or elites on the table. Nothing. His his whole army was formed of, of formations. But he gets all the special rules from the formations that he would get through his force orcs. So there's no there's no negative penalty for him. Um, what he brought was he brought three troops, a Death Jester, a Shadow Seer. Um, he brought a Void Reaver, he called it, and he brought two units of two bikes, and he brought two of his transports that two of his two of his uh, troop units were in. I brought. Um, two units of 16 warriors, I brought a unit of 10 warriors inside a ghost arc, I brought 10 immortals, I brought my hero, my overlord, and um, I brought... I brought two units of um, Tomb Blades because they have the ignored cover weaponry which is good on this board that everybody has night fighting in, and I brought... Um, I brought a unit of six men of flayed ones for, for a very particular purpose. I'm, I'm trying to recall details of the game. Uh, forgive me, I don't have any notes for this one. I'm, I'm rather tired. <laughs> um, uh, turn one, it, it's it's all standard fare. He, um, he, his warlord trait says add four to your steal the initiative roll, which means he steals initiative on a six. So he had me deploy first, he deployed second, and then he stole the initiative, so whatever. Um, he got to see me deploy and then move forward, but that's alright because I, 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 I deployed in a way that he really didn't have any other options to do exactly what I wanted him to do. I, I, I knew he was playing um, an LR based army, so I deployed in the very back. I didn't give him room to, to move 36 inches and move behind me. Um, and I knew all he wanted to do was charge, so I, I just I stayed back and abused my range as long as I could. Um, one of the rules for this uh, battle zone, battleground, the war zone is um, all hills and craters are considered dangerous terrain instead of difficult. And there was a bunch of them on the table, so he was constantly losing dudes to that. I didn't lose dudes to any of them, but mostly because I was very rarely moving. So... He moves forward, he does some shots, he drops uh, tomb, uh, a tomb blade from both units, so both units are only three people, uh, three, or two, two tomb blades left because they're, they started at three, and he kills a single warrior. Um, start of my turn, oh no, I'm sorry, and he, and he, this is important, he deals two wounds right off the bat to the Armor 13 Ghost Arc, because he goes, haywire, haywire. And right, right, almost immediately, my ghost arc just not pay for itself. My ghost arc did not play for itself. I'm, I'm not happy. I brought it. Um, it restores the one warrior to the one to the, to the unit I brought to the unit the lost one. So my warrior units are back up to full. And I just I start taking shots at them. I drop vehicles here where I can. I, I drop. Um, I try to drop all the bikes, but one of them lives. Uh, it's it's all pretty standard fare. If if you saw the last video, you you can kind of understand how this how this one goes too. His transport vehicles move forward. Dudes jump out. <laughs> um, he he just kind of, he just kind of assaulted everywhere he could. Um, he didn't have a lot of opportunities to. By the end of the game, all I had lost was uh, I I lost a whole unit of warriors. I lost both units of tomb blades. That's it. Uh, the the ten man unit inside the ghost arc was completely unscathed. The sixteen, the other sixteen unit of warriors was completely unscathed. The ten immortals were unscathed, and the the overlord was unscathed. The the and the flight ones were unscathed. 
Um, funny thing that happened in this game that ha always happens when when you play Necrons. Um, one of his units assaulted. Uh, one of his troops assaulted my my Necron warriors, and he only killed two of them because the way I had set up my army, I have a four. Excuse me, a four up armor save. I have a four-up reanimation save, which basically is a feel no pain save. It's a save I get to take after my armor save. So I get a four-up. Then if I fail the four-up, I get a second four-up, and I get to reroll ones on the second on the second one. So I'm not losing dudes particularly quickly. So two of them drop. I don't kill any of his because Necrons are not that good in close combat. Um, warriors are at least warriors are not good in close combat. No, I take that back. Necrons are not good in close combat. I'll, I'll, I'll just go out on a limb and say the entire codex. Yeah, the entire codex is not a melee codex. Sorry. Lich cards just aren't good anymore. Aren't good these days. So, uh, none of my dudes die. And he's got his Shadow Seer in that unit. And the Shadow Seer has a rule that says any unit that makes a leadership test within 12 inches of him reduce their leadership by 2. So I've lost by 2. And I'm down by two because of that Shadow Seer's ability, which means I'm leadership six. I roll, I fail. I fail my leadership check. Now, he gets to sweeping advance me. My highest initiative is two. I get to roll a d6 and add into it. His highest, his highest initiative is seven. He gets to roll a d6 and add into it. If, he, if, I roll a one, if I roll a six, I have an eight. If he rolls a one, he has an eight. On a tie, he catches me. So I, all those warriors, I think it was... Uh, counting the ones he had shot down, I think it was 12 left, just gone. Just boop, pick him up from the table, sweeping advanced. Yeah. I, I honestly... I think warrior... I think Necrons need a special rule that says they can't be sweeping advanced. Because to put him down to initiative like that is just... it's it's It happens so often where you'll just have a bunch of dudes just pick up. That's why that's why Necrons aren't good in close combat, because if you if you fail your leadership, which happens a lot in close combat, I know you start at ten, but you're gonna lose dudes, and that's it. And the, the problem the problem is you're all initiative two, even dudes like Lichgard who have like AP three blades and AP two, two blades and all that kind of stuff are still initiative two. So anything else that's also good in combat goes first. <sighs> Necrons are not good. In it. Necrons are not good in combat combat. The only unit still kind of worth a damn in combat is race. Scarabs I guess too. You can you can swarm someone in scarabs. Race are good. That's it. And and race are not as good as Harlequins. I made sure not to bring any, any melee to this list. So that happened. Um, what I what I want to talk about more in this one is kind of the ending. What, what happened in the end. Um, so I brought my. I, I I know I said I brought my flayed ones for a specific purpose. I did bring my flayed ones for a specific purpose, and they 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 actually they served in their purpose. When I when we got told in advance who we were going up against, uh, when I got told I was going up against the Harlequin player, I brought the flayed man the flayed one unit specifically for the purpose of having them outflank go into his deployment zone and capture an objective because I knew when you when you're playing Harlequins your objective is is to go into melee um, he's not the kind of army who to sit and camp on an objective and he didn't so my flayed ones outflank in and take one of the objectives take his take his take one of his objectives I had a single tomb blade left that whizzed past him and took the other objective and I was sitting on the other objective so I had all three objectives. Um, bottom of turn four, he takes his he takes his turn four because he went first. He takes his turn four, and then when it comes to my turn four, he says, "Okay, I gotta go." So he he calls the game. The the judge is there. He's been watching the whole time, and he says, "If you're gonna call the game, if you're if you're gonna leave." I am holding all, uh, m me, I was holding all three objectives and the victory would go to me. And that's how he called it. He called it a win for me because I had all three objectives, I was winning. I don't, in my book, I really don't. Here's, here's how, here's how I, I, I want to talk about in this video, like hypothetically, what would have happened. And this is why I don't like calling games, because it, 40k is still at the end of the day, it's a dice game. If if one player has to go, that's one. That's 
that's the thing that bothers me. If somebody is genuinely done, doesn't want to play anymore, and calls it, that's fine. They're admitting defeat. Just whatever. If one player has to go because the time is too much for them, he, the thing about 40k is, I always say, the, 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 like, whoever's winning and whoever's losing, whoever is winning can suddenly roll nothing but ones for the entire game, and the player who's losing can suddenly roll nothing but sixes. It's astronomically low. Like, like it is no, probably not going to happen, but it could. That's the thing. And I look at his board, I look at where he was placed, I look at what he had left, I look at where I'm placed, I look at what I have left, and I, I genuinely think if we had gone on to turn 5, if he had let me finish my turn 4 and go into turn 5, he would have had it. I, I genuinely think that. Um, what what he had left is he had the Shadow Seer and the Death Jester and their, their group of like 5 or 6 troop people at this point. Um, in the middle of a table, about like like they're in range to to assault and kill the the one tomb blade. Um, he had a transport with a unit inside of it that was in range to assault and kill the flayed ones. All he had to do was my, let's like I I, I, I I typed this whole thing out. I sent him an email about it, like explaining like I this is why I think that honestly we should have called this game a, a, a no win or whatever. Um, if I had finished my turn four, from everywhere I had placed, I, I know I can't show you pictures, but, but gee, just try to picture, imagine this in your head with me. I could take a couple of shots at his transport and a couple of shots at his unit out in the open. Other than that, I didn't have a lot of dudes in range. There's no freaking way I would kill that the unit of dudes out in the open because almost anywhere I shot them from they have a two-up cover safe the unit has stealth and shrouded put upon them and there were ruins and terrain all over the board they would have a two-up cover safe it would not I, I just could I wouldn't drop them it wouldn't happen the vehicle would jink and when the vehicle jinks it has a re-rollable cover save or re-rollable -re jink save so it, it has a four-up re-rollable even if I pop the vehicle, the dudes inside would pile out three inches and then move six inches on their turn and assault the flayed ones. So, but best case scenario, I pop the vehicle with some with some with some shots. I pop the vehicle. My turn ends. His turn five. The unit that that was out of the pop vehicle moves forward, charges the flayed ones, kills them outright. Takes the objective. The Shadow Seer, Death Jester, and friends move forward, kill the single tomb blade, capture the objective. All of a sudden, he's rolling two objectives to my t to my one objective. My turn five comes up. I take some pot shots on the, on the, the unit that is has a two up cover save now sitting on that, that on the one objective. The Shadow Seer and friends don't kill enough of them to prime off the objective. The other unit is kind of far away by this point. They're sitting in a ruin where it's hard to draw light of sight. I get a couple of shots on them, not many. I may kill a few. I won't kill the whole unit. They're selling on the objective. Roll a d6. I think it's one, two, or three. Game immediately ends. He's holding two objectives. I'm holding one. He wins. That's that's honestly how I think it would go down. I know I, I might have went a little too fast there, but I've been thinking I've been thinking a lot about this. And if if I sound um, like unhappy in this video, that's why. Because I'm not happy. I'm not I'm not happy with how the game ends. I I feel that I cheated him out of a victory he could have had. Uh, again, if, if this were just me, I would have said it was it was it was a nothing. But the, the judge person is is the one who who says how it goes, and he says that that at the time I was holding the objective, so I win. I really don't think if if we had continued to play the game, that that would have that would have mattered. Uh, one other thing of, of uh, on the same topic, I guess, that I can talk about before I end this video. Um, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine because this has turned into a pet peeve of mine because this happens a lot. Not not necessarily with the Harlequin player, but it happens with with one or two players in particular. If you're gonna sit down and play 40k and you know you have a time limit, don't play 40k. And there's not more like that's all there is to it. If if you know you have to leave at six, or like six as an example, and it's already two o'clock, and you want to play a, a twelve fifty point game, boy, this example is sounding specific. Don't play. Don't do it. Don't. 
because Warhammer 40k is just not that short of a game. It will last longer than that, and it did. If an emergency comes up and you gotta go, or if like something else come, if something comes up, whatever. It it something comes up, something comes up. But if if you like if you know ahead of time that you you're on a you're on a limited frame of time, just know how long Warhammer 40k takes. A while. It takes a while. And I'm I'm I'm. This this is gonna make this is gonna make me sound like a hypocrite. I I realize I'm I'm gonna sound hypocritical. I'm not. Like like I gotta try to explain this properly. I'm the kind of kind of guy where where if if you tell me you're on a limited like if if you tell me you're on a limited frame of time and you want me to pick up the pace on my turns, I'm gonna tell you too bad. You know, I when I sit down to play Warhammer 40k, I'm sitting down to play until the game is done. If something comes up, something comes up for me. But I don't have a time limit. I'm going to move my models at my pace. I'm going to go clear shooting at my pace. I'm going to do this at my pace. Just as I expect you to do it at your pace. If you want to spend five minutes determining what kind of psychics powers you're going to use when you only have three of them and you only have three dice to roll, go ahead. Do that. But just know that, that you're the one on the time limit. If you want to go fast, you go fast. But I, I'm i here to play the game until it ends. I'm not here to rush it. I'm going to play it until it's done. So if, if you know you're on a time limit, don't play. Because no, otherwise you get scenarios like this. Where you've got to call it when you otherwise could have won. Probably would have won if you had kept going. I'm not saying I'm not saying he he definitely would have. I could have gotten more shots than than I thought. Maybe I could have killed more dudes. He could have rolled ones on his saves. It happens, but I I I, I honestly think if it had kept going, it it really could have gone in his favor. He could have won it. He could have stolen it. And that's what gets me. I I I won, but I shouldn't have. I I didn't earn it. I didn't earn the win. That's all it is. I didn't earn the win. All right. Thank you for listening, and there should be another one of these next week. There should be one of these. In theory, there's going to be one of these every week from here on out because the campaign's going to keep going. Um, as long as I stay in the campaign, um, that it, it'll be. It should be every week. The campaign will go on sometime until next year, if if uh, everything goes as planned. It's it's a long one. So. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the to the other I'm gonna talk to like the judge or the the the, the, the campaign manager to see if the, I can possibly opt out because what what bugs me about the campaign I know I didn't go into it but there's there's a lot of there's a lot of rules in place like having to create your hero not being able to bring unique characters that that um, I really I think it's I think it's too restrictive and it's not kind of my style of play and uh, I I haven't been having fun. With 40k lately, these these past two that's really all it is. We're, we're really ultimately comes down to these these past two games of Warhammer 40k haven't been fun. Um, the first time, the first time where where I, I the last video where where I, I I kind of trounced him. Oh, sorry. These last three games of Warhammer 40k haven't been fun. Three two games ago, I I got trounced playing Tau. I did a video on that. One game ago, I trounced someone when I really shouldn't have, and I, that makes me feel really bad. It does, and this one I feel even worse about. I just I feel bad about these games, and it, it's wearing me down. It's wearing me down. All right, thank you for listening, and there should be another one of these next week. Because even if I'm dropping out, it's not going to be yet. It's going to be a while before we can find another player. I'll probably stay in. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll, I, I hope the next game is more entertaining than this one, but it probably won't be because the only two people I could fight next are Chaos and Guard, and both of those will be losses. I promise. I say that, but, but I, I know, I know how it goes with Chaos and Guard. I've, I have issues with both of those armies, especially Guard. There's, there's a lot of people. Mostly the people who play Chaos who say the the Chaos Codex sucks. I disagree with you. I think the Chaos Codex is amazing. It's incredibly strong. It's like Space Marines, but better in almost every single facet. I think it is better in every single facet. Just about. There's not a lot of advantages to playing Space Marines anymore these days. There's not. I mean, there's there's Space Marines are still good, but but there's Codexes out there that are just Space Marines better. 
Space Marines Plus. Like Chaos. Chaos is basically Space Marines Plus. Like lore wise, whatever. I'm not a Chaos fan, but from the from the rules perspective, nah dog, Chaos is where it's at. Like like if you're a Space Marine and you want to be better than you are right now, dude, go to Chaos, because they will make you better. They'll they'll give you one of the marks and just you'll be better than the regular Space Marine, straight up. You'll cost more, but you'll pay for yourself, whatever. Guard, on the other hand, I don't think anybody disagrees on. Uh, Guard is just strong. Guard is a very tough codex, and I know the player I'm going up against is it's going to be even worse. I've never fought him, but I've heard him talk about his army, and it's it's going to be threatening. I mean, let me talk about that for a bit because this this is this is this is something you got to hear. The the Imperial Guard player is actual military by trade. He's he's mil he's Air Force. Real, real Air Force. The dude, the real dude is real Air Force. Um, for some reason, uh, he, 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 I'm not saying like bad thing, but, but for whatever reasons that he had in mind, when he started playing Imperial Guard, he decided he wanted his Imperial Guard, like, armies to, to reflect what he does for his job, for his, his service. This this Imperial Guard player has hundreds, hundreds. I I I'm, I am not saying that as like, what's the word like um, hyper hyperbole? No, it's not, like not it's not hyperbole. It's exaggeration. That was what I'm looking for. I'm not exaggerating. He owns hundreds of Imperial Guard flyers, literal hundreds. It would not surprise me. To, to play against him and like us in the same 1250 point game and see six or more flyers and I have issues with one I don't think it's gonna go well against that guy I think I'm gonna get I'm, I'm gonna get trounced but we'll see what happens and thank you for listening I know this video was more of a rant than it was detailing a game but how it is it was it was just a, it was a standard game against Harlequins is really only one thing they can do and there's only only one thing you can do against them um, Harlequin turn Harlequins move forward assault if they're in range other players turn shoot Harlequins back away repeat repeat until game end